Hello, my friends. Happy Wednesday. It is Facebook Live time, so I'm excited to be here with you today. We're going to do our class, our monthly class, so I've got three cards to share with you tonight. Normally we just do one, but because it's the last Wednesday of the month, we actually will do three um, featuring the celebration paper and the part of my story, Stamp Set Hi Chris. Um, so we've got three cards to share tonight. And I'm going to just share a little bit of my um, favorites for um, celebration because it's ending on Sunday. We're all done with celebration. So in case you're not familiar with that, um, if you order $50 or more, you get to pick a free item for every 50 you spend. Um, so I'm going to share a few of my favorites from this year, and then we'll go ahead and get started with um, the cards. They are featuring the part of my story stamp set, which is one of the free celebration items, and the, um, does the blah, 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 butterfly botanical butterfly paper, which is awesome as well. And that one is um, also a celebration item. So there's lots of things still to be had. And then if you stick around till the end, um, I do have a secret to share with you. So that's a very exciting secret, too, if I do say so myself. Very, very happy. Um, okay, so it looks like some of you have found me. So I'm going to go ahead and get us set up so we can start um, start the stamp thing because that's what you're all here for, right? So let's go ahead and get this switched. Hang on one second. All right, pardon me while I get you situated here. I'll try not to make you dizzy. Get this all straightened out. I do have a host code. Whoop, I thought I taped that down, but apparently I did not. Um, I do have a host code for you tonight. So if you place an order um, by next Wednesday, so one week, if you place an order using that host code, you can get some kits for next month. I'm going to do a card class again on the last Wednesday of the month featuring the Butterfly Gala stamp set. So um, I think that looks good. So if you order with the host code, um, which is 3SGGXT29, um, then you'll be able to get next month's kits too. I'm just going to go ahead, while we're waiting for people to find me, I'm going to go ahead and just take this down because otherwise I know it will go flying. All right, so let me tape that. I ran out of my washi tape, so I'm using regular tape today. I need to order more, more washi. How can I be without washi? All right, so here's a couple of my favorites from Celebration that, um, of course, Francois the Frog, um, So Happy Together, is definitely one of my favorites. We did that as a class in January, I believe. No, February. We did that in February. So if you want to watch that, you can go back and watch that um, on February 27th. I did that one. Um, but somebody else is borrowing my, my little Francois the Frog set, so I don't have that one. But that one, of course, was a favorite. And then I loved the cupcake one, which we did a class with that at the end of January. Um, that's a really fun stand. Set. These two I feel like I neglected. I didn't really get to play with them much. Um, I made a couple of cards with this. I did a Teach Me Tuesday with this one, so you can always go back and check that out too. But I love the little birds, and there's a sample card in the catalog that's gorgeous with that. And then the little rooster, he's really cute too. I think I only played with him once. See, there were so many fun toys that I didn't really get to play with all of them. But all of these are $50 reward items, so if you like any of these and you spend $50, you get to pick one of these for free. Um, I'll stick that back here because we don't need that. And then the paper, hi Jolene. The paper that we're using tonight is the butterfly, the botanical butterfly paper. And you can see I've used a ton of this stuff. This is beautiful. I love that sheet. Um, my absolute favorite favorite is the um, the buffalo plaid here, the um, gingham. Which if you're doing the cards with me, if you've got kits this month, you do have that because I used. Um, that on one of the cards. I love this one too. So this is the paper. There's not much left of what I have because I used this a ton. Such a pretty set of paper. So that's also a $50 reward item that you can earn for free um, through March 31st with a $50 order. So um, definitely want to get those orders in before the weekend so that you won't miss out. All right, so here's the cards we're doing today. We're going to do three I think there's quite a few of you stamping with me tonight. Um, I'm not sure if you're all on here yet, but um, I think I sent out 10 or 12 kits or something. So um, these are the three we're going to do. If you have your kit, which this is what it looks like, if you got shipped your little kit. Um, hi, Lori. Uh, this is what it looks like. And I put them in, in the packaging in the order um, that you're, we're going to stamp them tonight. So you will um, just kind of leave it in that little pile. And I'm going to pull it out. 
too because I'm going to stamp with you. So I'm going to open my little kit. So like I said, when you pull it out, you're going to want to be careful to kind of pull everything out together because it is all layered the way you're going to need it. All right, so let's set this aside for right now. And I'm just going to grab the top card and I'll set this one aside. Um, for this card in particular, you're going to need the Melon Mambo ink pad, the uh, Memento Black ink pad, and then I used the Falling Flowers stamp set for this. Um, you can use any flower set you want. Um, actually, and I, yeah, I used that on this one too. I was thinking I didn't use it, but I did. I used this little swirly thing. So for this particular card, I did a swirl in the background on the pink. So if you don't have the Falling Flowers stamp set, you could substitute with any sort of background image, really. Um, I used just this little swirly, but you could do, you know, some smaller flowers repeated. You could do the words that we're using. So if you don't have this stamp set, you could use... Um, I'm using You're My Chosen Family, so you could stamp the You're My Chosen Family on the Melon Mambo kind of in a background pattern using the Melon Mambo ink, or if you don't have that, you could use Versamark ink too, because that's like a watermark. So those are some options if you don't have what I'm using. I'm going to go ahead and get the stamp set out, I mean the, st the stamp I need out. This one, we're using You're My Chosen Family. I love this stamp set. It has such great um, words, particularly if you're a scrapbooker, too. Um, I think these would be really cute, like, for, um, like, I use this on a scrapbook page, actually, already. I'm so glad you are a part of my story. Maybe I'll show it to you, because it's right here. So you can see it works as a, stamp, a scrapbooking one, too. So here's my scrapbook page that I did using the... Um, the, your, the I'm so glad you are part of my story. So you can definitely use it. And I used um, some flowers or some leaves in the background. So definitely possible to use that for scrapbooking as well. Anyway, so let's go ahead and pull out the one we're using. I'm using the You Are My Fam, Your Ch My Chosen Family. These are the new cling mount stamps, which I absolutely love. No more taping your stamps to your blocks because they fall off so easily. These stick really well, as you can tell. This is stuck to my thumb, which I love it. You do want to be careful, particularly with the smaller ones. These are usually okay, but when you pull them off, make sure you get under the label and pull it up. And don't just yank it by here, because then you'll rip your spongy. And then that's never a good thing. All right, so let's go ahead, and I'm going to put this down on my table. And so you can see the tape on all of my blocks, because I'm always taping the old ones to my block. I love the cling mount stamp, Nancy. They're so awesome. All right, so um, if you don't have kits and you want to stamp along with us, I'm using a Whisper White base or any white cardstock. It's um, eight and a half by five and a half and scored in the middle at four and a quarter. I'm using the thick Whisper White because it's just it's nice and sturdy, so it, it um, makes a great card base. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we can go ahead and attach. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong. No, I'm not. Let me put this somewhere where I can see it. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and attach the pattern paper. This is from that Botanical Butterflies pattern paper, the celebration reward item. And we're just going to go ahead and attach that right to the card. We don't have to do anything else to it. So I'm going to stick that down. There we go. All right, next up is the Melon Mambo piece. I'm going to go ahead and take that. Um, this piece is, oh, you know what my... Um, ugh. I don't know where my, my, what is that thing called, ruler is, so I can't actually tell you. I believe this is three by four, um, if I remember correctly. And then the black piece, the layering piece, would be three and a quarter by four and a quarter. I'm going to take the swirly that I showed you from Falling Flowers. So, and another little thing for you to know, once the new catalog comes out in June, um, these wood mount stamps are going away. The only thing we'll have in wood mount is going to be the big background stamps. Everything else will be either photopolymer, which is the completely see-through ones, or these new cling ones, which I'm actually okay with. I always thought I'd be really upset if they retired the wood mount stamps, but um, with these new cling mount, I'm okay with it because I love them. And they're actually really great for new stampers because you can see through it. So I'm just making sure I get this whole thing inked up which I did. I already inked my finger about two minutes into stamping, but whatever. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ink that up, and I'm going to sort of stamp this on this side over here. 
So straight down and then straight up. And then I've got that little swirly on the side. So there you can see that. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. We can close the pink for now so we don't have any disasters. All right, I also already punched out or die cut for you um, the flowers and these little cute like leaves. These are from the May Flowers framelits, which coordinate with that Falling Flower stamp set. This is one of my favorite, favorite dies, and you're using a couple of them on these kits. Um, this one here is gorgeous, which we're going to use that on another card later. Um, this is the one that we're using on this card. As you can see, it's still got stuff in it from when I cut all of your stuff out. Um, it's really pretty. These were the little leaves. So, um, oops, this is in the wrong... Oh, no, it's not. That's the right one. Okay, never mind. And then it's got the little leaves, too. So it's a really fun stamp set. I like this one, too. It's like a nice detailed leaf, which adds a lot to your cards, your scrapbook pages. These make great elements on scrapbook pages as well. So May Flowers um, framelits, that's what those are. All right, let's go ahead, and I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive, my regular adhesive, right in the middle here, because we're going to tack it down, and it will be fine. I'm going to put it... Um, let's see, where do I want it? Like, kind of right in the middle almost. So I'll tack that down there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive. And actually, I might use a glue dot. If you have a glue dot handy, it's probably going to be easier. So I'll grab a glue dot, and I'm just going to take the end of this, stick it on top of the glue dot, push down, and then it comes off on your paper. And I'm just going to fold over the those edges. And then I can tuck this in here and attach that down. And then I'll do the same thing for the other one. We'll stick that. Oh, come off. And then we'll do this. It's been a really crazy week. I think oh, many of you, if you've been in classes with me or, or um, reading my emails lately, you know there's a lot of stuff happening for me. I'm preparing right now my display for the wedding expo this weekend which is the first time I've ever done one of those so we'll see how that goes I'm a little nervous all right let's see okay so now we're going to take um this is the tea room uh duo ribbon so you get when you order it you get this pretty coastal cabana with gold and then you also get the very vanilla with gold so it comes with two rolls 10 yards um total five of each I love this stuff it's so pretty but of course, this went perfectly with this, this nice, bright, bold cards using the Coastal Cabana here. I'm going to actually tie this to the right. So one little trick is when you're, if you want a bow to be on this side, you're going to give yourself more ribbon on that side because it has to cross the card. So you'll put less on this side and more on that side. If you wanted it on this side, you'd put more on this side and less on that side. So whichever side you want it on, you're going to have less ribbon on that side because it doesn't have to go as far to meet up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, tie this down here. You don't really have to worry about where it lands right now because um, you can move it once it's tied. I don't um, knot them first. I just tie the bow so you can kind of slip it up and down wherever you need it to go. So I'm going to just go ahead and tie a little bow here and wrap that around. There. Okay. Get that nice and tight, and then I'm going to go ahead and fluff it up a little bit. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for joining me from Wisconsin. I bet it's cold there. We're getting a little bit warmer here, which is nice. Although, I think it's supposed to get cold again tonight, so I probably am speaking too soon. All right. Let's cut this down. And there is that. Okay. So... Um, next up, we can go ahead and attach this layer to that layer because we're all done with that. Um, before I do that, I am going to move this down, though, just a little bit. Because, let's see, where do I want this? Yeah, I think that will be good. All right, so we're going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and tape this down. Now, once you put this pink onto the black, you can't really move that ribbon as easily. So, um, and actually, I just noticed that on the original card, I tied it around both the pink and the black, but whatever. It's all good. Nobody will know. Oh, it was 60 today in Wisconsin? Holy moly. That's nice. I don't think it was that warm here. Hi, Nicole. Oh, you were down in my neck of the woods? All right. Let's see. Okay. So we're going to use dimensionals for this one. Where did I put the dimensionals? 
How does this happen? Oh, here they are. I was going to say, how does this happen? I literally have like five things on my desk and I can't find anything already. All right. You should see my house. Holy moly. I have Creative Escape next weekend in this bridal show this weekend. So literally every surface of my house, including pretty much every inch of the floor, is covered in crap right now. I can't wait to get everything sorted out and get my house back because it's driving me crazy. And I'm not n normally like a real neat nick kind of girl, but... This is a bit much, it's driving me bonkers. So it'll be good to get all of that done. Oh, nice, Dennis is really fun, I love Dennis. All right, let's go ahead and stick this right in the middle with the dimensionals. And then we have to stamp our um, greeting. So this is a newer punch, you may not have seen it before. This is the story label punch I believe it's called and it's actually a uh, celebration coordination item so it's only got gunk on this one it's only good for um through the end of March so if you like this it's designed to coordinate with this stamp set it will cut out this one the long way it cuts out this one that way it cuts out this one that way it fits all of these greetings so it's a great little layering piece so if you have this stamp set um, and you like this punch, you'll want to do this before March 31st because that is going away. Um, I just pre-punched them for you, though, so that you could actually stamp on them as well. All right, so we're using Memento Black. And I have no idea where that sponge came from. All right, let's go ahead and ink this up. And these are felt-based ink pads, so if you have one of these, these you do have to put a little more pressure on than you do with our Stampin' Up! ink pads because they're felt-based rather than foam-based. The foam ones are squishy, so if you squish too much, you get ink everywhere. All right, let's see if I can get this in the middle. This is the tricky part. But the good thing is these are clear stamps, so it really makes it easier. All right, straight down, straight up, and there you go. Oop, it looks like my black needs a little re-inking. It's, uh, it's a little light but it will work. All right, so now what I did is I popped this on the card with some dimensionals as well. So actually, I think, no, I lied. I think I just did regular adhesive on the side that overlaps this and then a, a dimensional over here. And as you can see, I probably should have moved my bow over a little bit because it's making it hang off the card, um, but we'll, we'll make it work. Okay, so I'm gonna use regular adhesive on this side Come on, there we go. And a dimensional or two on the other side, just to kind of even it out. All right, take those off. And then we'll stick this down here. Uh, come on, get off my finger. It's kind of getting really close to the edge of that card, but it'll be fine. Whoops, except for it's crooked. There we go. All right, and I'll just kind of twist my bow a little bit so that it is straight. Oh, I forgot the little center. So um, in my sample cards, I used silver um, faceted gems, but I ordered the gold ones for you because I think those will work better because the, the ribbon is gold. So you should have two gold ones. One we're going to use it on a different card, um, and this one is on this card. So we're going to go ahead and stick that right in the middle. It fits perfectly. If I can get it in there. There we go. And there it is. Done. I'm so glad you liked that one, Chris. We'll have to, we'll do our voting at the end to see which one you guys like the best. And as I, I don't know if you all heard me in the beginning, but I do have a secret to share with you at the end. Don't let me forget, because I do sometimes do that. Um, but I do have some exciting news to share with you. So, we will do that later. All right, and if you're just joining us and you want to stamp with me again next month, April 24th is my next Facebook Live class. And if you order by um, next week, uh, whatever the date is, that would be April 3rd, I think. Four, five, six, yeah. April 3rd, Wednesday, April 3rd. Then you'll get next month's kits to stamp with me. All right, so this is the next one up. We're going to do this one. And I don't think I told you in the beginning, but this is Coastal Cabana, which is one of my favorite. Melon Mambo and Pear Pizzazz is the color combo mixed in with some black and white paper from the Botanical, um, Botanical, no, but Butterfly, oh my gosh, but Botanical Butterflies DSP. I swear I'll get it through a Facebook Live one time without not being able to speak. <laughs> That's my goal in life. Okay, <laughs> let's go ahead and start with that one. So this should be the, the second pile if you got the kits. So you'll just pull that out. Um, this is the second one. So we're going to go ahead and um, just attach layers first because we don't need to do anything to them. So see, this is some really cool paper. So you get black and white on one side and then you get the other um, 
butterflies on the back. But we're going to use the black and white for this one. Hi, Terry Lynn. I'm glad you liked it. Thanks for watching. All right. So let's attach this down. So um, I forgot to tell you measurements in case you're stamping with me. Four inches across, 11 um, long. So it's just an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock cut right in half. And then this layer is three and three quarters by uh, five. And this one is four by five and a quarter. And we're just layering everything together. And then this one's going to go flat right onto the card. So you can see it's a perfect little mat. Three layers. All right. And we'll stick this down right in the middle. Hopefully. There's that. All right. So what I did for you, if you look at the original card, I actually stamped the leaves. But um, because you may not have the leaves, I sent you just... To, die cut leaves that aren't stamped so you can just use those if you want to you don't need to have them stamped um, but I'll show you um, what I did just so you can see in case you guys aren't familiar with the big shot um, somewhere around here I gave myself a little spare piece of here it is nope that's not it where'd I put my little see I told you up oh, two minutes and everything's covered here it is I just got myself a scrap piece of pear pizzazz it is a simple card, this one is. I love the, the gingham, that's my favorite part. All right, so we're using the leaf image in the Falling Flowers stamp set, but like I said, if you don't have this, you can just use the little die cut ones that I sent you um, all on your own. You don't need to have the die cut. Or if, you're, um, if you have any leaf ones, you can just always stamp them and then hand cut them. Um, I don't mind fussy cutting, but I know some people really hate that, but... I find it relaxing. But this, I think this um, stamped part really gives it just an extra little oomph if you have something you can stamp and cut out. Oh, bummer. I missed. Let's do that again on this side. See, I can't talk and stamp. My mom always, oh my gosh, I did it twice. Well, I think this one's better. We'll use that one. My mom always said I couldn't talk and chew gum because I was not very coordinated. So um, apparently I can't talk and stamp at the same time either. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring the big shot into the picture. Um, it might get a little um, close up for you, but hopefully you'll be able to see. So I'm going to use those um, Mayflower framelits that I showed you in the beginning. Uh, so these were those. So pretty. And I'm going to use the leaf one. And you'll see, I have my magnetic platform under here, although I need new plates. I just ordered new plates because these are getting really bad. And I need some for Creative Escape next weekend. Can't believe it's next weekend. You wouldn't believe all the stuff I still have to do for that, but I'm not worried about that right now. I've got to finish the bridal show stuff, which also has a lot of stuff that needs to get done. All right, so we're going to roll this through. And that will cut out my leaf. So you can see it just die cuts it. This little Big Shot machine is... So much fun. And I'm actually giving one of those away at Creative Escape next weekend, which is exciting. All right, so let's go ahead and do the other one. And you can run this back through the other side without having to switch sides. You can just kind of put this down and then um, run it through again. So we're going to go ahead, stick that down, put this on top, and roll that through. And then you can see that it just gives it a little more oomph. Um, if you've got the stamped part of it as well, but like I said, it's not necessary. All right, so come on, come out. All right, there we go. And then we've got our little leaf. Okay, and it doesn't look that bad, even though I missed twice on stamping. Throw that out, get this out of the way. All right, so, so you can just see the difference. So if you're using the kits and you don't have the stamped leaf, you can use just the regular ones that I sent you. So I'm just going to set those aside because I'm going to use my stamped ones. All right, so we already assembled that. Next up is the little pink circle, which I believe this is, uh, it's either an inch and three quarters or two inches. I think it might be an inch and three quarters. We're going to stick this down kind of to the right because we're going to have our greeting come out over here. So I'm going to kind of put it uh, pretty close to the edge, but not quite to the edge. I'm going to put it down right in the middle, um, just to the, almost to the edge of that gingham paper. All right, now I'm going to take another sentiment 
from that part of my story stamp set. So we're going to use the um, The World Needs More People Like You. And that's this one. So again, I'm going to dig from underneath there so I don't pull my sponginess there. And we'll grab another block. More blocks with stickiness on it. I'm going to have to clean all my blocks once um, the new stamps come out. And this is a tight fit, um, so hopefully you'll do better than I did on my last one. Hopefully I'll do better than I did on my last one, but at least we have two shots with this. Although I, <laughs> I messed up both times the last time, so we'll see how this goes. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and stick this uh, kind of closer to the left, leaving a little space for your banner edge, but you're going to tuck that right part under the flower, so we want to make sure we leave a little room there. Oh, a little crooked. Let's try it again. Sometimes the label isn't on completely um, straight, so that is usually my problem. There we go. Look, I did it in two shots that time. Okay, so now we're going to cut the banner end. I'm going to show you a little trick, too. Um, I just find it easier nowadays because I do these so often to snip in the middle and then we cut from corner to center, corner to center. But if you have the tailored tag punch, um, you can actually stick this right in, which one do I want? I want it on this, nope, I want it on this side. You can stick it in the top of here and just kind of um, center that and cut off the tip that way. See, I, I have a hard time getting it centered. So we'll see how this works. I told you, I do much better just using my scissors, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. Oh, it worked. Look, I did it. I did it. I did it. Imagine that. All right. So there's that way too. If you have that one, that works nicely. Okay. So next up, we're going to go ahead and put this just down kind of flat. Want this to go almost to the edge of here, probably to the edge of the coastal cabana is where I put that. So we're just going to, did I just do the wrong side? No, I didn't. Okay. I just scared myself. Uh, that would be funny. Okay. Pretty much every card you get from me probably has um, bad stamping on the backside. <laughs> it's all good. See, I've been doing it for 13 years, but it's still it's still a trial and error thing here. All right. So next, we're gonna do Coastal Cabana. Is the color I used with this flower. Again, if you don't have this flower stamp set, you can use whatever you have on hand. Um, and if you don't have dies for it, then um, you can just hand cut them. It's easy enough. This stamp set's nice. See the little arrow on here? I'm going to pay attention to where that arrow is. I'm going to point it straight up on my white cardstock. So straight down, straight up, and we get our little flower. I'm going to put this ink pad away just so we don't have any um, catastrophes. And now I'm going to bring the big shot back out because I'm going to show you something. Well, we're going to cut it for one. And for two, I'll show you a little trick with these the flower ones here. So, when we pull out the dies for this, um, here's the die. See the little arrow? So helpful when you're cutting this out. So remember, oh, I hope I didn't switch this around when I put it down. But if I, if I, nope, I didn't. Okay, so this was where I had the arrow pointed. I had it pointed straight up. So if you point the arrow on the die straight up, it lines it up beautifully. So you don't really have to mess with it. All right, so we're going to put the, um, paper on, then the die, then our cutting mat, second cutting mat, and roll that through. And we get our little die cut flower, perfectly die cut. We'll put this away and we'll move this back out of the way. I think we're actually done with it now for tonight, I think, because I already pre-die cut everything else. All right. So now we have our flower. We'll bring the card back in. This is going to go right in the center of the pink circle. I am going to pop that up with some dimensionals. Whoops, this one's already sticky, so let's pull that one off. And we'll use that one. And I like to do a triangle when I do circular elements. Just so that it keeps it from sagging when you um, put it through the mail. If they um, don't hand cancel it and it goes through the machine and you only have one dimensional on, they'll get lopsided flowers, which is always sad. But still appreciated, I'm sure it's sure. Oh no, if you haven't attached your flower yet, don't do it because we needed to um, stick this in here. So, 
let's pull this back off. The good thing with dimensionals is if you get them right away, they come off really easily. If they have been stuck for a while, they're not coming off. So um, I do believe I trimmed these down a little bit because they're a little long. So just kind of, just like you trim your stems when you've got flowers, um, you would trim these too. So and then I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive in the middle. I'm glad you like that little tip there, Terry. Yeah, those dies are really nice. All right, so let's do this. And I'm, I don't want it to go too far off the page because um, then it won't fit in the envelope. So let's go ahead and make it a little shorter than that one. There we go. And I'm going to add just a little bit of adhesive back here just to keep those stuck down. Okay. And now we can put this back on. Hey, Chris. Rule of three is good. Yes. All right, so there's that. Okie dokie. Now we're going to do the little center piece. Where did I put that? Oh, here it is. So again, um, as I mentioned, I switched yours to gold because I liked how it went better with the ribbon that I sent you. Mm -hmm. More coordinated. I'm glad you, I love this color combo too. Coastal Cabana is always my favorite and I just was looking for something bright and fun and springy. So we did all sorts of bright colors with just um, popped against black and white, which is really fun. All right, so that's card number two. So we've got card number one and we've got card number two. Let's do our last one, card number three, and then we'll vote on and see which one we like better. All right, this one is also using that paper, the... Um, botanical butterflies and you can see each one has um, like colored pattern on the back side pretty bold patterns actually for the most part on the back side and then black and white on the the other side which I really like because like you can see with this this card set here I love pairing bold bright colors with um, black and white like especially when you do just like a pop of color so again this one is four and a half, I'm sorry, four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored at five and a half this time because it's a top fold card, and then five, uh, four by five and a quarter, and three and three quarters by five. So those are your basic layers. I'll say them again because I kind of went really fast. So the base layer is four and a quarter by 11, and then we score that at five and a half if you want a top fold card. This layer, the black one that I'm taping down right now, is um, four by five and a quarter. And this pattern paper is three and three quarters by five. So you can tell they're only a quarter of an inch apart and that gives you a nice perfect little matting for your card. And I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, okay, good. I was like, I wasn't paying attention. I hope I don't have to tie anything around this because I already taped them down, but I don't. So we're good. All right. So, first thing I did was I attached, see this is that beautiful die, um, I love this one. The first thing I did is attach this to the card, and it's slightly to the right, but not um, entirely to the right. So, I'm going to go ahead and attach this down. Just put a little adhesive in the middle. We're going to cover this center part, so it doesn't matter that it's going to be sticky through the middle. So, it's just the easiest way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and tape that down. But see, if I was going to just send this card, you wouldn't want to do that, because then... Um, that would remain sticky and get stuck in the envelope, but we're covering all of that, so it doesn't matter. So I did something a little bit different with this um, card. I gave you one long piece, but we're gonna kind of measure here. So I want it to kind of stick out, actually let me, let me see this, because we want it to stick out on both sides. So I'm going to cut it right about here, maybe a little bit shorter. And I should be using my ribbon scissors. And then I'm going to cut so that I've got four that are the same size. So I'm just going to grab my ribbon scissors for that. It's easier. And I'm just going to snip one, two. Um, so this is great if you've got little, like, itty-bitty bits of um, ribbon left over. Oops, I didn't quite time that right. I may have to fix that little piece. I cut mine too big. Um, if you have little bits of ribbon like kind of hanging around, it's a great little trick. You just kind of tape them down underneath an element. Yeah, see, these are too long. I cut them too long, but that's okay. And it makes it like a cute little embellishment. So I'm going to go ahead and stick these right into that tape that I have here. And you can kind of make them crisscross a little bit if you want to. Um, and what I'll do for this, because it won't really matter, I'm going to add a little bit more tape on here. And I'm going to cut this in half again. Will improvise and I'm just gonna stick it kind of coming out here 
And again, nobody's going to see this mess that's under here, so they won't know the difference. I'm going to go ahead and kind of make these go a little awry. There we go. And then we're going to layer um, this part on top. So, um, yeah, and then that will be good. And I'll trim those down in a second. But let me show you what I did for a trick. So if you look at the original card, see how I've got the white layered on the crumb? Uh, nope, no crumb cake. On the Coastal Cabana, my other favorite color. But these are actually the same size, right? So you're thinking, hey, how'd you do that? I'll show you. Let's stamp first. We're going to take the... Uh, here's to those who inspire us and don't even know it. And I'm going to grab my um, block. And we're going to go ahead and ink this up with the memento black. I'm gonna get really inky hopefully because I know this is getting dry. And you'll see this kind of lines up right with this little punch. So I'm gonna go ahead and line that up in here. Straight down and straight up. And it's crooked. <laughs> three for three. I'm doing I'm doing fabulous today. <laughs> Look, if I can stamp, anybody can stamp. See? This is what this means. Uh, well, let's move that over a little bit and scooch it up just a tiny, tiny bit and hope for the best. Normally, if I was doing this, I would stamp it and then punch it. Oh, there we go. But because I'm making you do it, I figured I would do it the way I made you guys do it. Um, but normally I would have punched, I would have stamped this and then you could um, open your punch and slip it in the back and punch it out that way. And then you can get it nice and lined up. But since all of you didn't have the punch, I wanted to have to do what you guys had to do. Hey, Verna, how are you? No worries about being late. We're happy you're here. All right, so now we're going to layer these. So what I did was I just cut this one right down the center. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight because nobody's going to see it under there. So you've got two little pieces now. Then I took the white piece uh, the yucky side and I'm gonna put adhesive on here just kind of where these are gonna overlap because we're not gonna use the regular adhesive to put it onto the card but this is how we're gonna get these little pieces to stick so now I'm just gonna layer these kind of apart like that and then I'll take this and layer oh wait I lied <laughs> I lied I lied I lied good thing I paying attention okay so first let's cut thinner ends in here snip in the center and then corner to center corner to center okay and then we're gonna snip in the middle of that one and corner to center corner to center oh I missed it's really hard to kind of do this sometimes because my head is in the way or the camera is in the way. So sorry about that. That's a really, that's a really wonky. Oh, that one's funny. Okay, let me try that again. <laughs> Told you it's really hard because my head's in the way. My big fat head. All right, there we go. That's better. Okay. Oops. Now I got all these little pieces stuck to my adhesive. Ay ay ay. All right. So now I'm gonna stick some adhesive on this in the middle, and I'm gonna stick this right down in the center and pick that up okay see where I'm going now and this is gonna layer right on top of that alrighty see my little trick so now you can see it's not really um, like a layering one but we made it a layering one and you can do that with pretty much any of the shapes so it's kind of a fun little trick to have in your tool bag alright so let's go ahead and attach this with some dimensionals we'll do this yeah, the banner accent Terry Lim was actually designed to cover up the missing notch. That would be, like, if we had left him like that, there'd be a hole over here. So um, it was kind of, like, out of necessity, but I do like how it looks. All right, so now we're going to pull these off, maybe. There we go. These are being honorary. Okay. One, two, three, four. And this is going to go right down in the middle. And then I'm going to give my little ribbons a haircut because I cut them too long. So make sure you cut yours a little bit smaller. Um, so I really only have, oh, those are okay. 
I think. Yeah. So you can't really see the fourth one because it's too tiny. I didn't put it out far enough, but that's okay. I've got three on one side and four on the other, but nobody will know. All right, there we go. There's card number four. Um, nope, not four. <laughs> I can't count either. Th number three. All right, so we've got one, two, three. I feel like I'm the um, owl for the Tootsie Roll Pop. All right, there we go. What do we think? Which one's our favorite? I don't really know which one's my favorite of these. I kind of like them all. I don't really necessarily have a favorite, so I'd be curious to see what you guys think. All right, so don't forget, if you want next month's kits, they're using the, or I'm featuring the Butterfly Gala stamp set. And you know what? Uh, I didn't bring that over here. I don't think it's over here, so I can't even show it to you. Um, yeah, it's still packed from class, and I don't have my catalog here to show you either. But it's a really pretty Butterfly stamp set. I'll show you the, um, the cards as soon as I get them designed. I have not designed those yet because of all the other stuff that's happening right now. Um, but if you use the host code before March 30, or no, by April 3rd, you'll get those kits for free. Um, and then I promise to share a secret with you. So would you guys like to hear the secret? It's pretty exciting. So there's going to be two options for you. You can, I'm glad you guys all like them all. I, I honestly don't have a favorite on this one. I like, I love the colors. So one, two, and three. Perfect. I like it. Um, so March 31st is the deadline for celebration. So if you wanted any of the freebies, you want to make sure you put those orders in before the 31st, which is Sunday. Um, but on April 1st, Stampin' Up! is coming out with la -da -da, storage by Stampin' Up! So we're going to get some really fun storage containers to use for our ink pads, designed specifically for our ink pads, our markers, our ink refills, and our new blends, which is so exciting. And we also have the open containers, too, so you can put ribbon in them, you can put, these are our little half, um, half, I believe, they're the half case, wood mount cases, half, I don't know what, you, the wood mount cases, the half size. There we go. Oy, oy, oy. So yeah, so these are coming out available to customers and demonstrators as of April 1st. So as of Monday, we will all be able to order these. And um, I'm going to do it like right away because I want all of them pronto. I've been waiting impatiently somewhat to, and I'm so glad I did, that I didn't replace my storage a long time ago because um, now I can have it all color coordinated and I can have everything, um, one big pretty wall of fun storage. So yeah, so these are coming out Monday. So one thing I wanted to kind of point out for you, because you may not notice, also with Celebration, we have the Starter Kit Special. And the Starter Kit Special is um, 175 worth of product of your choice. You can pick whatever you want for um, either $99 plus tax, and you get the $175 worth of product, anything you want. Or you can do the version with the Craft and Carry Tote, which is $129, which the bag is valued at $50, and you get it for $30 more. And you'll still get to pick the $175 worth of product of your choice. And then what's cool is you have to do that before March, uh, March 31st, because that's the, the celebration special. But what will happen is that officially makes you a demonstrator, which means you now will have a 20% discount. So come April 1st, when all of this loveliness comes out, you can now save 20% off of all of that. So um, not only will you get the amazing deal for the starter kit, you'll also get a discount on all of the product. And the product is actually pretty, um, pretty... Uh, relatively, um, not relatively, it is very um, cost effective. It's it's not super expensive. So the the tray of five for the five ink pads and markers would be $14. The stamping blend storage trays um, come with five as well, and those are $14. And then the open storage cube is 10. The storage topper, which is for like your ink refills and whatnot, is five. And the storage lid, if you just want a flat lid, would be three. So they're all really... Um, reasonably priced. So, um, yeah. So if you've been thinking about either joining to do classes and events or just to get a discount, now would be a, the best time because you can get your craft and carry tote, you can get your extra $50 in your product, in your starter kit, and then you can get your discount on Monday. So just a little food for thought. Anyway. All right. That is what I have for you today. Um, if you want to get next month's kit, don't forget to use the code. However, if your order is 150 or more, um, make sure you um, do not use that code because I want you to get your host credits. So I will automatically send the kits to anybody that has placed an order of 150 or more by next Wednesday, April um, 4th. 
3rd, 3rd, April 3rd, <laughs> jeez, I don't even know what day it is, okay, so there you are, thanks so much for watching, you're so welcome, Chris, I'm glad you were here, I'm actually going to, I'm playing with the little um, shutter thing you gave me for the wedding this weekend, so I'm, I'll show you a picture when we're done, I can't share until after the event, but um, it's coming in super handy, so thank you, <laughs> all right, have a great week, we'll, uh, I'm not sure if I'll be back next Wednesday, because it's the day before Creative Escape, I will certainly try, um, but don't, I'm not guaranteeing it. <laughs> it's been crazy. So um, I will see many of you at Creative Escape next week. And I'm so excited. And I hope you have a great week and we'll see you soon. Bye.